This video is going to give you everything you need for Modern Warfare 3. There are lots of settings in this game which are huge quality of life boosts that if you don't use in the game you'll be at a major disadvantage. I'm going to be showing all of you them today. There are a couple of quality settings visually speaking, in terms of color customization, and also loads of quality settings in terms of audio and controller settings that are massive. And of course if you're looking for the best possible pro player controls, this video is going to give you that. Now, every single platform, regardless of what you're using, has access to the view tab. Here, you want a field of view of around about 110. I personally use 115 because I'm at a monitor, but if you're on a larger screen like a TV, a slightly lower one, around 105 to 110, I think works best. But anybody who's sitting at a desk or a monitor, I think 115 is the sweet spot. You need an effective field of view with a wide format, which is going to make the gun visually a little bit smaller, which is better for spotting targets max FOV for third person, and a wide field of view for your vehicles. World and weapon motion blur off because it makes the game look worse, and film grain set to 0.1, just a tiny little bit of it, to give the game a bit of a gritty edge. And you want your camera movement set to least as much as humanly possible. Now, if you're using an OLED display, inverted flashbangs are actually worth having because the blacks to colors end up being better in terms of response time, but if you're on an LED monitor, do not invert your flashbangs or an LED TV. Now, one thing that everybody has access to is upscaling and sharpening, and if you're on console, it's Fidelity CAS. If you're on PC, I recommend NVIDIA DLIA, and make sure you have it set to native at 70%. You don't want your render resolution low if you're on PC. But for those of you who are on console, Fidelity CAS I would put in and around the 70 range, because that tends to work better. In the controller tab, these are the pro settings that you're going to need. I would highly recommend using the button layout of Tactical Flipped. I personally prefer shooting and aiming with L1 and R1, but you may prefer your triggers, so feel free to keep that non-flipped if necessary. But Tactical is going to allow you to slide by clicking into your analog and dive by holding into your analog, which is worth having. In this game, sliding is hugely the most beneficial movement mechanic, so I would highly recommend having it easy on standby with the Tactical layout. You don't want anything here except for potential flipped. Uh, I recommend turning vibration trigger effects off, but you do want to change your dead zones. If you don't have stick drift on your controller, I would try putting this down as low as humanly possible. I put them at 0.4 or 0.4, or as you can see on screen here, just the value four. Um, but if you do have stick drift, feel free to slightly increase this value. You can tell if you have stick drift if your character starts to move without you touching either of your analog sticks. If you're somebody who plays with your triggers, you can also make your triggers more sensitive with these two options, which allows them to be more responsive and more like digital buttons, and less like a spring delay mechanism, which I also recommend. Moving on to the aiming tab, I personally use a sensitivity of 1010, but I know that's not for everybody. If you're somebody who struggles with high senses, I recommend around 7, it's a sweet spot, but personally the higher your sensitivity, the more you'll be able to flick onto opponents. I recommend an ADS sensitivity multiplier of 0.9. This is going to make it so that your ADS and your hip fire are fairly similar, so you're not losing muscle memory, but will give you a slight refinement in your aim down sight engagements to make your weapons less sensitive and more accurate. I don't change anything on sensitivity multipliers or vertical aim axes, and if you do, you'll end up in some really weird situations with your controller, so I don't recommend that at all. But a huge option here is the dynamic response curve. This is something that 95% of professional players use. We all use the same aim response curve of dynamic. And what this means is that when your analog stick is all the way to the left and right, you're snapping really fast. But when your analog stick is in the center and you're adjusting for shots on targets, there are very minimal changes and very minimal compensations. You also want your ADS sensitivity transition timing to be set to instant, which is a huge benefit for making your guns feel a bit more responsive and snappy. And of course, for aim assist, I would highly recommend using the Black Ops aim assist setting. For gameplay, auto tax sprint I think is worth having, and other than that, there isn't a huge amount to change here. Automatic tax sprint is pretty much the biggest one you'd want, but here are all the other settings as well on screen. Personally, I haven't really messed around with any of these. You may want to disable automatic airborne mantling onto off instead of partial, but for the most part, for me, I think these are fine as is. The only other setting I change here is Prioritize Interact. I personally think this makes more sense because it means you have to hold square to reload and it's more of a conscious decision rather than accidentally tapping square and reloading, which can cause problems. We do have slide cancelling back, which is a huge bonus, but it's just something I think is worth putting on your radar. 
And of course, there are some other settings here for the future of Warzone, like armor plates. I personally apply one on controller, but applying all makes more sense on keyboard and mouse. Next up, you want to go to your interface segment, specifically color customization. In here, you can change the colors of all of your opponents and all of your uh, friendlies and squad mates. And I personally think the darker these colors are and the more pronounced they are, the easier it is to see those individual targets. So I like to make those really bold colors as much as you humanly can. In the color filter setting, you want to set this to filter one or filter two, and you want the color for the world intensity to be at the highest possible value to give you those popping colors, but you want the HUD intensity to be at zero so that the colors are really strong. You can see the difference between the two as I slide back and forth here. You 100% want interface at zero and you want world at 100. For some reason, these settings are inverted, don't ask me why, it's just how they are. If you're somebody who plays on PC, you'll definitely want your FPS counter enabled, but I highly recommend everybody has latency and packet loss turned on regardless of your platform, so you can see if the server you're in is lagging. In the audio settings, I recommend you use the headphones mix. Don't use bass boosted as it actually muffles the sounds of gunshots and your actual footsteps and combines the two into a really messy mix. But I would recommend changing your master volume to slightly reduce the dialogue get rid of music and increase cinematic music volume to 100. This means that the start of rounds and the end of rounds, you'll still get the gameplay music, which is really cool, but you won't have any music in game distracting you from footsteps. That's about it for all I have in this video. Ultimately, there are some things that are subjective, but I really recommend you stick with the default settings that I have shown you here today, because a lot of them are tried and tested across multiple Call of Duties at this point. And whilst you can slightly reduce your sensitivities, I personally think it's better to kind of baptize yourself in the hellscape of maximum sensitivities. Go for 1010, and if you find it uncomfortable, good, because you will progressively get better with 1010, and I think it is objectively better than having a lower sense. If you find these settings useful, feel free to drop a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you again in the next one.